This lesson deals with a second order bandstop filter. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 12, starting on page 35. Let's further reorganize our, our L and C elements and find the voltage across L and C. Our output voltage can be a voltage divider with the input and the ratio of this impedance, which is SL plus one over SC with R and times VN is our output. And then we'll just divide by that to get our transfer function. Let's multiply numerator and denominator by SC. So I then get S squared LC plus one. I get an SRC term an S squared LC term, and then a one. Let's further divide numerator and denominator by LC, pull that out, likewise here it'll cancel. So the numerator then is S squared plus one over LC. The denominator is S squared, and then SRC divided by LC. The C's cancel and I get R over L, and then for the one and dividing by LC. This too has a general form, same denominator with S squared plus omega naught over Q naught S plus omega naught squared, as we had in our previous second order filters. And now our numerator is going to be some H naught times the quantity S squared plus omega naught squared. We'll call this our bandstop function. Our denominator is the same as the previous second order filters. And so we have the same value of omega naught and Q naught. We compare the numerator, I have one times the quantity S squared plus one over LC. And you can see here that one over LC is our omega naught squared. So H naught is equal to one. And our Q naught is just like before, is one over R squared of L over C. You can rederive it with the steps that are here. Let's graph the general magnitude of our transfer function by letting s equal j omega. So we'll go back to our expression and then plug in j omega. So I get a minus omega squared plus omega naught squared divided by minus omega squared j omega times omega naught over q naught and then omega naught squared. I need to make this look like our forms. So our denominator has some of the things I need for making a form eight, but the numerator I don't. I have the real terms, but I don't have an imaginary term. So let me write the imaginary term as j zero. Now let's pull out some terms and see if we can get this to look like our forms seven and eight. Pull out h naught and omega naught squared, left with a one, and then a minus omega squared over omega naught squared plus j zero. In the denominator, I'm gonna pull out an omega naught squared. I'm left with a one minus omega squared over omega naught squared, and then j omega divided by omega naught squared cancels this omega naught, so we just have an omega naught to the first power and q naught in the denominator. So let's write this as a product of terms. It's cancel, so I just get h naught. My numerator term, I write this as one minus the quantity omega over omega naught squared plus j omega over omega naught, but make q naught equal to infinity to give me a value of j zero. So now this looks like our form seven with our omega naught, but now a q naught of infinity. And then lastly, here's our form eight. So one over one minus the quantity omega over omega naught squared plus j omega divided by omega naught q naught. Next, let's sketch these three forms. Form one would be 20 log base 10 of H naught. That's just a constant for all frequencies. This is a form seven. And all I have to do is find omega naught. And then at that frequency and above, I'll be increasing at 40 dB per decade and below it, just an asymptote of zero dB per decade. For the form eight, same thing, except that we change the slope to be a minus 40 dB per decade. Now I wanna add up the forms. Let's find the region where the slopes are constant. And to the left of this, we have a slope of zero dB per decade, zero and zero. And then the summation of those three curves would just be 20 log base 10 of h naught. Now when we get to this point, we have a slope of plus 40, a slope of minus 40, and a slope of zero. So the net summation is also zero. We'll have a sum that's just constant with frequency. But adding up the asymptotes, just get a straight line. Now the actual curve has a value of zero when omega equals omega naught. Remember the numerator was minus omega squared plus omega naught squared. So when omega equals omega naught, we get zero. But also if you remember the sketching of the actual waveform with the form seven is that we had the curve dip down and come back up again. The amount it dipped down depended on the value of Q. As Q increased, it dipped farther and farther down. So in our case, Q is infinity. You can think of it that way, that the actual curve here is gonna be dipping down, coming back up again. Or the fact that we're approaching this value at low frequencies and high frequencies, but at omega equals omega naught, the actual curve is equal to zero which is minus infinity dB. So we'd have to have a curve that dips down and comes back up again. Now in our circuit, we found that H naught is equal to one. So looking at our Bode plot, for omega much, much less than omega naught, we approach H naught, which is equal to one or zero dB in our case. And when it's much, much greater than omega naught, the same thing. But when omega equals omega naught, we have a gain of zero, which is minus infinity. So a small band of frequencies are blocked or removed, and the low and high frequency signals compared to omega naught are passed. That's what we call this a band stop or notch filter. You can also see the same thing from the circuit itself. And let's go back to page 35. When the frequency is very low compared to omega naught, as we approach DC, 
the inductor looks like a short circuit and the capacitor looks like an open circuit. No current flows, and so there's no drop across the resistor. Output voltage is equal to a minus zero plus Vn. The output equals the input. In other words, a gain of one. Now if you go for frequencies much above omega naught, the opposite happens. The inductor looks more like an open circuit as we approach higher and higher frequencies, and the capacitor looks more like a short circuit. Again, no current flows, so no drop across the resistor. The output voltage equals the input voltage. Then lastly, at omega equals omega naught, the impedance of the inductor is exactly the same as the impedance of the capacitor, but the opposite sign. We effectively have a short circuit at that point. So the output's equal to zero. I'm given these four filters of a second order low pass, high pass, band pass, and band stop filter, how do we pick the components for our filter? Take a look at that on page 37. Let's develop a design procedure for picking the R, L, and C for any of our filters. Now, given the values of R, L, and C in an existing circuit, you could figure out the value of omega naught and Q naught, as well as the Bode plots for all four second order filters. Suppose that we know the specifications of the filter. In other words, what is omega naught and Q naught, given that H naught is equal to one? Well, I have three components, but I only have two constraints omega naught and Q naught, because H naught is equal to one. So there's an infinite number of possibilities for selecting the R, L, and C given these conditions. So what we could do is pick one of the components and then solve for the remaining. There aren't as many values for inductors as there are for capacitors and resistors, so maybe we just start there by picking the value of L to be a standard value that we could purchase from a store, although we can make our own inductors too. And let's solve for the C and the R. Omega naught squared is equal to one over LC, so we can just solve for C as one over omega naught squared L. I also had a formula for Q naught. It was one over R squared of L over C for our second order filters. Likewise here, we can just exchange the R and the Q naught and then get the value of R based on the value of L and C and Q naught. What I'd like to do is carry this one step further and that is to express R in terms of the specifications of the filter, pretty much like we have here. We're given omega naught squared and the value we picked for L, we can then solve for C. Put in the fact that C is equal to one over omega naught squared L. So that's gonna give us then L times the reciprocal of C, which is equal to omega naught squared L. Getting L squared and omega naught squared, so then the square root of that is just omega naught times L, and then divided by Q naught. So if I were to pick a value of L that gave me an impractical resistor or a capacitor, I can go back and pick L again, such that the values of C and R are practical. And these are some of the properties of a bandstop filter and how to pick the components in any of our second order filters.